Okay, the purpose of this tutorial is to cover the innervation of the forearm and hand. Uh, we'll describe motor and sensory distributions from the median, ulnar, and the radial nerves, and the focus on the forearm and hand. Uh, this picture is showing uh, the following. On each of these nerves, we're going to focus on this brachial plexus and show what levels of the spinal nerves contribute to the nerve. We'll also take a look at the, their topographical relationship to the distal part of the humerus. We'll take a look of where in the hand they'll uh, enter. And then also this picture shows an anterior view of the top picture and a posterior view of that bottom picture of the, of the hand on the right side. Okay, so let's start with our median nerve first. And the primary levels of contribution to the median nerve will be C6 to T1. Sometimes there's a contribution from C5 as well. And so there we have on the brachial plexus the median nerve, which then sends a branch all the way down the axial and arm where it does not give off any branches. And then it crosses right in front of the medial supracondylar ridge of the humerus. And at this point, at the elbow, it now then enters the forearm where it gives off many of its motor branches. And so uh, as the median nerve continues, it gives rise to nerves that go to the pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, um, palmaris longus, and flexor digitorum superficialis. It also gives rise to a nerve called the anterior interosseous nerve, AIN for short. It courses right in front of the interosseous membrane between the radius and ulna. It's a deeper branch. And it then provides innervation to the radial half of the flexor digitorum profundus, and as well as branches to the flexor pollicis longus and pronator quadratus muscles. Um, it also gives rise to a palmar cutaneous branch that then gives innervation to the palm of the hand over the thumb and so forth. It then, the median nerve, courses through the carpal tunnel, that uh, flexor retinaculum covering the, the uh, carpal bones. And then after traversing the carpal tunnel, the median nerve gives rise to a recurrent median branch that innervates our three our muscles, and it continues on and gives innervation to our lumbricals, going to digits two and three. We'll sometimes call these the first and second lumbricals, which um, act on digits two, the index finger, and three, your swear finger. It also gives rise to some digital cutaneous branches that are going to give rise to the following cutaneous distribution of the hand. So when it comes now to the median nerve and the things that you need to know about the median nerve, that's it. You can screen capture this or pause this and make sure that you capture here's the median nerve distribution. Um, the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve primarily receives its levels from C8 and T1, but there are some contributions from C7 as well. In this diagram, there is our ulnar nerve. Now, similar to the median nerve, the ulnar nerve courses through the axilla down the arm and it doesn't do anything. Then it reaches the distal humerus. And it courses behind this medial epicondyle, and with this ligament that kind of wraps it, it's called the cubital tunnel. And it courses deep to that medial epicondyle of the humerus through this cubital tunnel, and then enters the forearm. And within the forearm, it gives rise to just a couple of nerves, motor nerves. It goes to the flexor carpi ulnaris. If you remember, it's the only muscle in the forearm that has the word ulna in it. So that's the way you remember it. And then it also innervates the ulnar half of the flexor digitorum profundus. In other words, the muscle bellies that give rise to the tendons that go to digits four, your ring finger, and five, your pinky. Um, that also gives rise to some branches that goes to the, that goes, that we'll travel to and distribute to the palm of the hand, but I did not illustrate it in this tutorial. Uh, once reaching the hand, the ulnar nerve traverses Guillon's canal. Guillon's canal is this tiny little canal in the medial proximal part of the uh, hand, right by this pisiform bone, and then gives rise to a number of branches. So first are some cutaneous branches. It gives the following distribution, the pinky finger, and then the ulnar half of the ring finger, digit four, and both the medial and posterior part of the medial, or the anterior and posterior part of the medial part of the hand. It also gives rise to motor branches that innervate our three hypothenar muscles, branches that go to lumbricals four, uh, three and four that then act on digits four and five, as well as our pads and dabs. And recall that pad stands for palmar interosseous muscles that adduct the digits, and the dabs 
standing for dorsal interossei muscles that abduct or abduct the digits, and as well as the adductor pollicis muscle. So here we have now the distribution of the ulnar nerve. And so you can screen capture this, and here we've got what the ulnar nerve's distribution is going to be. Um, now the radial nerve. So here we have this picture. And so the radial nerve has contributions from C5 all the way to T1. T1, not as much. Um, and there in this picture is coming off that posterior cord is this radial nerve. And then it actually does give off branches as it's coursing down all the way down into the uh, arm. It's giving off branches to the triceps muscles. And we'll talk more about that in another tutorial. But it crosses from the posterior region of the humerus ventrally to the uh uh, to this anterior part of the humerus before then diving back and going into the posterior forearm, so along this lateral supracondylar ridge. And in the posterior forearm, it's going to innervate all 11 forearm extensors. Now, there are some different branches that come off, but in the scope, scope of this course, we're not going to, uh, I don't think it's relevant that we cover them. Basically, you know, when the radial nerve goes in the posterior part of the forearm, it gives rise, it innervates all these forearm extensors. It also gives rise to subcutaneous branches, as you see distributed there, on that posterior part and the radial part of the hand, and a little bit of the digits, but it's basically the radial side of the posterior region of the hand, and there's its cutaneous distribution. And there we have median, ulnar, and radial nerves in the forearm and hand.